The Right Honourable Speaker of the House of Representatives, the Honourable Femi Bajambia Miller, and his lovely wife, my sister, Mrs. Salamatu Bajambia Miller, who is your saviour today, <laughs> Femi. <laughs> You know, as I heard the Right Honourable Speaker tearing me apart, the only nostalgia I felt was that, well, think of the good old days. I was in Form 5, I was in Form 1. I mean, think what I would have, think what I could have, think what I could have made of him on a night like this back there in Mobile. And I've just said, Bajabia Miller, go to the lawn. That's the lawn between Agri and Townsend. Kneel down there, put up your hands, close your eyes, and I'll go to sleep. <laughs> I won't hear of him again till the next morning. <laughs> thank you very much, everyone, for making this evening. And I must thank the 90th Anniversary Planning Committee and the Board of Governors of the College, ably led, ably led by Senior Felicia Phillips and Mr. Femi Olubanwo, respectively, for the excellent organization of this event. And I also must thank all our friends who are here from GCI, from Greg's, and all of that. I rather like some of the comments that uh, the Right Honorable Speaker made. I won't go to any of those right now. <laughs> but like most of us here, old boys of Igbobi, we owe a lot to Igbobi. Who we are, our personalities, our values, our worldview were all shaped at Igbobi College. And the secondary school one attends is incredibly instrumental, of course, to who one is. So when I introduced myself properly earlier on this evening to one of our colleagues, I said, I am Oshiba Jo 2 of Townsend House. Present here is Oshiba Jo 1, my older brother, Femi Oshiba Jo, who is also here. And then there's Oshiba Jo 3, my younger brother, Aki Oshiba Jo, who is also here. Then there's Oshibaju 4, Tsundi Oshibaju, the last of the boys in the family. It was in Igbobi that I realized that I had a strength in the arts. It was also there that I realized that I could never be a sprinter or a footballer. <laughs> it was very obvious at that point. In my Form 1 in Igbobi, Form 1A, Mrs. Elushade, our class teacher, got us to write essays every week. And the best essay would be posted on the notice board. So in my, the first two weeks in Ibobi, Dakwali, who I believe is here somewhere, his essay was declared the best. It was neat and had good punctuation, etc. Then she said there was one that was very imaginative, although it wasn't as neat, and it didn't have the right punctuation marks. She also read, read out my essay, and everyone clapped. So instead of one essay on the notice board, there were two. The best essay and my own essay. That encouragement stayed with me. And it gave me so much confidence going through school from then on. And it's important to mention that because the role of teachers is so crucial to what we become. I can never forget that the way that Mrs. Elushade carried on and what she did at that point, she's diseased now, she's uh, going to be with the Lord. Just made a whole difference in my perception of myself, my abilities, and how I would eventually, and how I eventually turned out. I watched seniors Femi Delumo, Henzo, he was called, that was his nickname, Daru Owe, Senior Tunde Nzegu, and of course Chris Bora. I watched them debate, and I knew I wanted to debate. So I debated for the school also. But those seniors who were ahead of me were the absolute inspiration for what I would then do in years to come. 
Because Igbobi placed a value on academics, on sports, and literary achievement, and you were called up on stage to receive your prize during the assembly, so you were recognized. And so if you excelled in sports, you were recognized. You excelled in academics, you were recognized in the assembly. But on the same stage, you could be publicly whipped for extreme bad behavior. So reward and punishment were on that same stage. And so it taught you very quickly the difference between good and evil. Igbobi celebrated orderliness, honesty, self-denial. Anyone caught stealing became an outcast. There was just no excuse. We won prizes for contributions to the SDF. That's the self-denial fund. So your class would win if you contributed to self-denial fund. And there was no special treatment. It didn't matter whether you were from a wealthy or permanent family or the son of the driver or the son of our laundry people. The khaki that we wore daily was essentially a leveler. What was admired and celebrated was high achievement and exemplary character. And it shaped our worldview. Money just was not important. Excessive display of wealth was discouraged. But character and achievement were always celebrated. And I made my closest friends in Ibobi, and our friendships came from all manner of circumstances, and so many who are here today. But I had a friend, I, I have a friend, Ade Ashekun, who became possibly my closest friend. He's now the ambassador, uh, the Nigerian ambassador in Canada. I met him for the first time on the queue in front of the library, the library, and we saw a picture of that library. We saw that library just a moment ago. And a quarrel started right there. We were queuing up, and I can't remember exactly what happened. He either stepped on my foot or I stepped on his foot or something. And then we decided right there. Everyone gathered around as soon as those things were happening. And we decided that we had to go and settle it with a fight. <laughs> so there's a place that we used to fight at that time. There's a particular place. I can't exactly remember the name of the place. I can't remember the name, but anyway. So we were there, we were going there to go and have this fight. And as we walked down there, we met with another uh, colleague of ours in uh, class two, uh, class one at the time, Fire Miwo. So Fire Miwo, for some reason, maybe, I, I, don't, even, I don't even know exactly why, so, spoke to us and dissuaded us from fighting. And said, look, why do you want to go and fight? Why do you want to go and beat yourselves up? Why? You know, of course, we had no real reason. So, and I wasn't sure whether he would give me a beating or whether I would give him a beating. So I just thought, well, I think it's just better to let the matter rest. And since then, of course, since uh, Form 1, we've been great friends since then. To maintain such high values, solid teachers, teachers of character were required. And simply, these teachers were not impressed with anything but performance and good behavior, and avoiding any offense that might get you into trouble, especially with Baba Ishubi. His office, getting, doing anything that was so bad that you ended up in his office was really the beginning of common sense. If you didn't have any common sense before, you would discover it very quickly if Baba caught you. And as someone has said earlier, not only had he caned our fathers and possibly grandfathers before us, if you, if you messed up, he had the canes there ready to give you a thorough beating. You learned English because grammatical slips were expensive. For each one, you heard pa 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 or if you so your English had to, be, had to be good. You hated eye service because you could be teased for impress, trying too hard to impress, to impress seniors. So impress was just a bad thing. And from those days, you just hated impress. Even now, I still hate impress. But <laughs> what is eye service? It will be produced the brightest and best and we owe generations to come that same opportunity. When the founders of Igobi College 
all those many years ago, decided to fill a gap that they saw in the education of boys. They not only created an environment that transformed the lives initially of 150 boys that walked into their campus in 1932, they triggered a legacy of excellence and integrity that has produced a whole retinue of young men who have gone on to set examples in almost every sphere of human endeavor. And all our alumni, many who are seated here today, have a story. And they've, ex they've been exemplary in so many different ways. In many ways, Igbobi is a testament to what committed and visionary leadership can accomplish. When people come together, when people come together to serve a purpose greater than themselves, the results are always far-reaching and long-lasting. And so, even as we roll out the series of events to mark our 90th anniversary, we'll do well, I think, to honor the legacy of the founders, the first set of teachers and administrators whose selfless commitment laid the moral foundation of the school and set it on a path of greatness. The likes of Mr. N. A. Birthwistle, N. P. Morris, Leslie Murby, and Bishop Odutola, Mr. Ogunlesi, and of course, Baba Ishubi. All of these men who started our school were a profound influence on all of us, even years and years after. In a sense, these men still form the biblical cloud of witnesses, guiding and inspiring the succession of administrators, teachers, alumni, and students who have come after to keep the flag flying. And it is the thread of dedicated service, exemplified and strong from one generation to another, that the society together as a strong, that has brought society together as a strong, cohesive whole. Every generation from Igbobi College since inception has produced an array of outstanding leaders, pioneering businessmen, exceptional statesmen who have served at every level of public service and governance, clergymen with national and global influence, thought leaders and intellectuals with indelible footprints in academia, in journalism, and many more different fields. But what is sometimes unseen beneath the surface of the individual achievements is the wider societal impact of each of these men, the values they've transferred within their families and immediate constituencies, the number of jobs they've created, the forward-thinking public policies that have been instrumental, that they've been instrumental in crafting, and the number of people inspired by the laurels they have won in their respective fields. If there's anything Ibobi has taught us, it is the difference one person can make by taking responsibility for, for their own little corner of the world and the duty we owe to pay it forward. So a relay team is only as strong as how well each person runs their leg and how successful they are in being able to pass on the baton. Ibobi College is still going strong today because its founders and those who came after them understood this and have been successful in empowering generation after generation of young men for 90 years. So the challenge for us today, those of us who are still running our respective races, is that we cannot afford to be the weak link. This is why the task that we've set for ourselves as part of the 90th anniversary celebration to raise one billion for infrastructural improvements and further educational upliftment of the students of our alma mater is imperative. I'm certain that given the caliber, the pedigree, the commitment of our alumni, this is a goal that we can reach very easily. I've, I'm told that already we have close to 200 million today. And, and I also know I also know from what I have heard that we should expect another maybe 100 or so million today. But I hope that those of us who are here will, especially after listening to what uh, Senior Felicia Phillips has said, will consider a regular endowment, regular payment into an endowment fund so that we can truly 
contribute the kind of money that will make not just a difference today, but will make a difference into the future. So we expect that all of those who are here will make a sacrificial commitment, a sacrificial commitment. I hope that um, that commitment will not just be for today, but will be, we'll be able, we'll continue to do so on a regular basis. We have the future counting on us to make a difference in the true spirit of our forebears, and we must not let them down. Our future will be proud and grateful that we bet on them and that we made a down payment through this fund. Thank you all very much. Up, I say. Up, I say. Shekewa, Shekewa. By the way, who knows what Shekewa is? <laughs>